Off Access is the UK version of something that originated in Brazil called Fora de Ex do Exo, um, which facilitated 6,000 shows in Brazil in 2012. So it's an artist network where um, one act will host another act in their part of uh, Brazil. Um, they get credits for it, um, which they can then use to go and play with another act somewhere else in the country. I thought, I'll get him back this year. He can tell us what's happening with the UK rollout with it a year on, um, what you can expect. And also, um, it allows us to film the whole thing this time. And um, you can sum it all up in uh, 20 minutes, I'm sure. So, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I will pass the mic to Jeff Thompson. Thank you very much, Olaf. Hello. Um, it's an update, so obviously if you weren't here last year, you wouldn't know what I was updating on. Who was here last year? Good. I was on fire last year. You're going to get the, 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 the less good version because I've got 20 minutes. Um, so basically, the premise is this. This is off-axis. Is What if we had a system where artists could play shows all over the country, and at every show, there was a full audience, appreciative relative audience, and that's even in towns they'd never been to before. All right, so my background is uh, I have a record label in Manchester. And uh, in 2008, we also started doing conferences, exactly this, very much like Wide Days, uh, called Unconvention. And that was just an opportunity for the, the local labels and local artists to get together like this to talk about problems. And, and the thing that happened with the unconvention was it kind of became a model that people replicated. So there's been 59 unconventions all over the place from Belfast to Middlesbrough to Brisbane to Uganda and Venezuela. And, um, uh, so we've seen a lot of different things um, in music. But one sort of reoccurring question or, or one reoccurring hurdle we've always come across, and I have this in Manchester with my bands, is we've got bands and they're phenomenal bands. They're great local artists. They cannot play outside of their own town at the, you know, the grassroots I'm talking about. So you may, this might be a familiar story to you. Uh, I have bands in Manchester last week selling 400 tickets. Uh, they're brilliant, people love them, there's, you know, there's, there's enthusiasm around them. Three days later, they're in London to 15 people. Right now, it's a simple equation is the audience you're going to win when you're in a, in a band or an artist starting out is your audience. Yep, the one you can really work, the one you can build and build and build is the one in your town. If you wanted to go and do that in the next town, you have to start again. And we've also got this catch 22. You know, it doesn't really matter how good you are in this, you know, this kind of grassroots we're talking about because if I've got a band from Manchester and I get hold of a promoter in Leeds, and I said, look, they're, they're phenomenal, they're brilliant. All the promoters are going to want to know is, but how many tickets are they going to sell in Leeds? Now, that's a fair question. I'm not here, as the, the promoter's asking exactly the right question. He's got to pay his bills. Um, they're not going to sell any tickets because they've not been on the radio. They're not famous. They've, they've not you know, featured on the front page of a magazine. Their name on a poster doesn't mean anything in Leeds, even though in Manchester it can mean 400 tickets. So does that all add up? That makes familiarity. Um, so... We've got this Cats 22, and, and as we went around doing the, the unconventions, we'd do them, and, and also talking at um, uh, Wired Days and Born to be Wired, you know, the bands are asking, but how do we actually move around? And there is ways to do it. Um, what we always work on is gig swaps, which uh, Johnny mentioned in the panel before last, if you know it, which is a, a solid way of doing it. But as Olaf mentioned, one of the places we got to do events was in Brazil. And when we first went there in 2009, um, we sort of got to hear about this network that they have, which is called the Forward Away Show. And over the years, we learned more and more about that. And in essence, it's, it, it does a lot of things now. It's a huge network. They do have their own university. But in essence, it started around circulating bands, moving bands around, because it was the, the same problem there as we have here. Um, and it started very, very small. It was four, well, there was a bit more background to this, but it started initially with four towns and that simple idea that, you know, well, we're in our town, we've got fans, people love what we do, we can put on good shows. You come to our town, we'll put you up, we'll host you, we'll make sure that there's a great show with a full audience, you play it and we'll come back. Um, but what they did, was, which was a twist from that system was, which, which was a very important twist because it made that quite small network about who you know and who you directly deal with into a sort of very scalable network is they put a currency into it. So in essence, um, the way I think about off-axis is it's about trading your audience. Yep. The, the thing you've got, if I've got a band in Manchester that can get 400 people along, 
That's a valuable thing, yep. But it's, it's, one value is it's 400 people in a room. But that's valuable to a band from another town who's trying to break an audience. Does that make sense? And especially if it's a relevant band. So if I, you know, they're a rock and roll band. If there's a rock and roll band in, in, in Birmingham that wants to come to Manchester, then that's a really valuable item. I've always thought, and I don't envy promoters, the hardest thing in the world to do is book an empty room and try and get people into it. Yep, and it, we've all been there. You book an empty room and, you, and six people turn up. So what you've, you can rely on is these bands who've done all that work, they've got the rooms full of people. It's how can we link those bands in a meaningful way. So yeah, it's a gig swap network really, but, but the way it works is with this currency system. So what we've set up is the thing called Off Axis, which is what I talked about here last year. It's based on the 4 OS show, and very simply, if I give you the example of how it would work. So we're an Edinburgh brand, and we've got an EP launch in a month's time. And you know, we've got we're two years old, and we've got 150 fans. We booked the EP launch, we're gonna have four bands on the bill. What if one of those bands was from Newcastle? Yep, we're not expecting them to bring a single person. Like, I understand the promoter saying, there's no point me putting on a Newcastle band, it's not gonna make me another five pounds. But it doesn't matter, because it's my job to sell the gig out, it's my EP launch. So I bring up a band from Newcastle. They're playing in a brand new town they've never been to before in front of 150 people. And of course, it's important that the bands match. They're both rock and roll bands, both folk bands. Now, of course, what you could do then is say, well, hang on, why don't we come back to Newcastle? Because you've got loads of fans. That's fine, that works. But for it to be scalable, what we do with the off-axis, which is taken from the idea of the issue, is we say, well, actually, this band in Edinburgh earned a credit. Yep, one credit within the off-axis system. And what a credit buys you is a gig with anyone else in the system on those same terms. So yes, we can host a band from Newcastle, we can go back to Newcastle, but we can host a band from Newcastle and then go, actually, we'd really like to try building something in Brighton. Or what we might do at our EP launch is host two bands, one from Newcastle and one from Carlisle. And with those two credits, we can think, well, in a few months' time, it would be handy if we could get a London show and a Brighton show. Yep, makes sense. So that's what you've got. You've got a, you've got a, a, a database, essentially, a central point for bands to be able to trade their audience with one another. Now, we've, what we've done is we've learned a lot of lessons from Brazil. They're, they're seven, eight, nine years into this, and it took them the first five years to get it right. So we're in the privileged position that we don't have to make their mistakes again. But as all have said, they now have 200 cities involved in this network. So the important things that um, we've got to do is, I'll remind myself, um, we've got to have a criteria, right? If I just said to every band in the country, do you want to be part of this? And they all said yes, then we could be probably in a lot of trouble. So the criteria is, it's not rocket science, is the bands in the system have to be able to produce a show with 70 people there. That's it. And that means that every show that you go to, a minimum of 70 people, it's not exactly 70 people, a minimum of 70 people, every show you go to, there's going to be 70 people. Now, 70 is kind of, it's, it's kind of an arbitrary number, but it's not, because the logic being is, the other thing that worked very successfully in Brazil that, that we see opportunity with off-axis is, is, the reason it's called off-axis, which is the translation of Ford Away Show, is in Brazil, they had the Axis, which was Sao Paulo and Rio. And it's a huge country, and you've got two very dominant cities in terms of culture and music and, and politics and everything. And up until they started their system, every band went to Sao Paulo and Rio to play. So if you lived up here, you went to Sao Paulo. If you lived over there, you went to Rio. If you did, nobody went between the towns because there was no way to facilitate it. So what we see the opportunity is, is an audience of 70 people in Ipswich is just as valuable as an audience of 70 people in London. An audience of 70 people in Edinburgh is just as valuable as an audience of 70 people in Cleethorpes. And it doesn't have to be 70, it could be 100, it could be 200, but it's a minimum so that we know where it is. So it's a closed system in the sense that everyone in it understands it, everyone in it is of the same level, and we've made a network that lets us trade our audience, yep. Now, why we think that's important is, is because, as I said at the start, the audience you can really win is the one in your hometown. That's the one that you can work and work and work and work. So, we're an Edinburgh band. Our job is to work that audience and make sure that we can get regular good shows and make that 50, 100 to 100, 150. And if every other band in, in their hometown is doing exactly the same thing, then it's the, you know, it's the swapping that actually brings the audiences together. And the website looks a bit like Facebook and it's a social networking site and it has a news feed and it tells you what bands have been adding things and what things have been, and it lets you see what opportunities there are and 
blah, blah, blah. The thing is, to be part of it, you have to earn the credits. So the, the impetus is always to put on the best hometown shows. And the more you do that, the more opportunity there is to play elsewhere. And the more everyone else is doing that, the more opportunity there is to play elsewhere. We've already started putting together the bands we're working with. Now, we're actually, we've got to walk before we can run. So we're only going to work with 40 bands. But we've already got quite a lot, you know, 30 or whatever it is bands across 14 towns. So, I mean, as I say, without the website, I've already got now bands from Derby playing with bands in Manchester, bands in Hull playing with Wrexham bands, bands from London playing in Stoke. It's that simple, right? And the beauty is we're not actually asking bands to do anything that they don't do anywhere. It's just that when there's a criteria met, they can work with other bands of that same criteria. So, because I'm not the best at remembering stuff, I've written myself some key points to remember, right? So, it's basically an elaborate gig swap system, yep. But it's organized and there's a criteria. So everyone's of the same mindset. Um, it allows artists to share audiences. Your job is to concentrate on the audience you've already got. Everyone else's job is to concentrate on the audience they've ever got, and then you can move around. Um, what we want to really make sure is it's very transparent. It's not for every single band. It's not for a band who are doing their first ever gig and it's not maybe it's for a band doing their fifth ever gig. It's for a band who's actually built that hometown audience. Now, it's not that we want it to be exclusive, we want it to be inclusive, but we have to draw the line. But we tell everyone where the line is. Yep. So if you're in a band who can get 30 mates down to a, to a local club show, brilliant, you, you're on the way. And when you can get that 30 to 70, drop me an email. Yep, and that's how it's working. Um, it puts a tangible, tangible value on camaraderie. That's how the Brazilians explain it. There's an awful lot of people, let's say the grassroots, or however we want to phrase it, DIY. There's a lot of people helping a lot of people out, and that's brilliant. But this actually puts a value on it that's worth something. So, you know, we've done a lot of gig swaps before where you help a band out and it's, everyone's friends and there's no badness involved, but the, the other show never happens. They get lost, the band break up, you lose touch, or it, you, you, could, you can never get the dates to match. In this instance, there's always a value. You've earned it. It's there forever. And within the system, you actually have a balance. You know, it's like a bank balance. You have 20 credits to your name, and that means you are eligible for these things, and this system is there to deliver them for you. Um, I think I mentioned before, it, it really opens out those smaller towns. And that sounds really patronizing. I'm from Middlesbrough. That's the shittest town you can come from, right? But if there's bands in those towns, in this country, I mean, I've got, as I say, we work with bands in Manchester. Really, there's 10 places you can play. Yep. Realistically, if you want to get on the road, you've got a Manchester, you've got a Leeds, you've got a Liverpool, you come at Glasgow, you've got Edinburgh, you've got London, Brighton, blah, blah, blah. That's it. So a bit like what happened in Brazil, what it does is it says, well, if there's just one band in the hall of, I don't know, like Wigan, right? If there's one band in Wigan that can pull 100 people, a dirty little punk band in Wigan that can pull 100 people, and they're in the system, that opens them up to every other dirty little punk band in the country. And we can have bands from Manchester going to Wigan and bands from Brighton going to Wigan, and that band from Wigan can go into Cardiff and Carlisle and so on. It matches, importantly, it matches bands by genre. It came up a few times in the last panel, and we all know it. So you can't put a rock band with a folk band and expect the audience to do it. Really, what we're doing is, if you're in a band like the band I'm describing, you've got an audience there that love what you do. Yep, and they care enough to come and see you. If you can provide them with more of the same of a very high level, you're actually doing them a really great service as well. So, you know, we, we, what we're doing is we're offering bands the opportunity to showcase other bands from around the country of a similar level themselves and to be showcased, showcased all around the country at a, a level similar to themselves. Um, it's really about working together, collaborated efforts. Um, and then the other thing we want to do is when we have this off-axis idea, so it's happening now, but it's not very public facing. and we kind of have to do it baby steps. But when we have it working, we have a public campaign or a public facing uh, brand of off-axis. Yep. And what our faxes will mean is, whether it's on a post, whether it's a flyer, whether it's just a, a passing mention, is that we want to have a published co public consciousness of what an off axis show is, which is essentially a band that's of a certain standard hosting bands from the rest of the country at that standard. So it's showcasing national talent at a local level, whether it's in Wigan, whether it's in Manchester. And I think that goes a lot back against, I forget who mentioned it before, but the pay-to-play problem, we certainly have a lot of it in Manchester. The reason pay-to-play exists is there's too many, it, it's a saturated market, there's too many bands 
trying to play too few shows, the quality is dropping, and it's becoming just about forcing the bands to sell tickets to their friends. And it's not about, this is a brilliant night, you should pay six pound because it's worth it. So we need to try and change that. And I think that's where off access can play a role because we're working with a standard and we're allowing bands to move in a way that, that they previously possibly hadn't been able to. Um, the other thing to know, it's completely free. It doesn't cost anything to be involved in it and it's non-exclusive. You do, you're not an off-axis band when you're part of the system. You, you, know, you don't have to book every single show you book. You have to do this, this, it. You use it when you want. You can do 10 shows a year, nine of them you can promote yourself or work with promoters or have a, it doesn't really matter. But for the, when you want to earn a credit, you have to do an off-axis show, which means you book it with a band who's another part of the system, through the system, and it's credited. And it's as simple as that. Um, so really, as I say, the, the, the beauty is you're only really having to do what you do anyway. You put on the great shows and you bring your audiences down and all this is doing is connecting like-minded bands to be able to move around in a way. And when I say it's not exclusive, the premise of all this is, is that you outgrow it. Yeah, the idea isn't that you're sort of stuck at this level. Is if you're, you know, as I said, the bands we have that have got three or four hundred fans in, in in Manchester. I believe if they could do a good three or four shows, you know, circuit round London, Brighton, they'll win their own fans. And the next time they go back, they won't have to use off axis. They'll go back because their name will be on a poster that people recognise. And it's not, you know, or they'll they'll get signed to an agent because they've created enough buzz. That's fine. It doesn't matter. None of it's premised. You know, it's not a, a closed system. It's not to keep people where they are. It's very much a, a, a method of building a national audience quickly and without necessarily the need for a number one single or a, you know, £250,000 advance from a record label. If you can work your own audience to that level, then everything else is possible. Because if you're in that band that's got 70 people or 80 people from Edinburgh, from Dumfries, you know, wherever it is, then I want you to come and talk to me and hopefully be part of it. And if you're the band that's got 50 fans at the minute, come and talk to me as well, because you know, that's who I want to speak to um, for the future. Two, two questions. One is, when the band is going to travel as the support, yep. do they make any money from that? Yep. And two is, is there a tiered system or reward system so an artist that has 100 fans is not treated the same mm. as somebody that has 400, because I want to, if I yeah, play yeah. for 400, how do I play in front of 400 in Manchester? Scott, Scott, I need you to come and sit with me when I'm working this stuff out, because that's, no, that's a very good question. So the money thing first, off axis doesn't deal with any money, right? It's just the trading thing. The money in these shows is the same money that currently exists. It comes in at the door. So the band put in the, you know, the promoter the band put on, that's the door. What we're saying is, for off axis, is my premise is this, bands are terrible at talking about money. Right, they are, they won't talk about it. So you book all this stuff and the bands won't even mention it. And it'll get to the night and there'll be a bunch of five pound notes in the, in the kitty tin and nobody will say anything. It'll get to the end of the night and there'll be a sort of awkwardness, right? So what we're saying is, as a default for the money side of it, and when I say it's a default, it's because you don't have to do it if you agree not to. But the default would be this. You play the show, if it's a free show, there's no money, you're doing it for the, for the show. If it's a paid show, let's say it's 150 capacity a tenner, because my maths isn't good enough, 1,500 quid. You take the cost of the show out, so it's 500 for the venue, we've got 1,000 pounds. That's the profit. The first thing that comes out of that is the petrol of the band who came before anything else is touched, yep. If you only made 11 pound profit and they put 30 quid of petrol in, they get the 11 pound, full stop. Of what's left from that, 60% to the host band that did all the work, 40% to the rest of the bill. Now the rest of the bill might be three bands, it might be the, the, the band that came to be hosted and two local bands, or it might be two, whatever. The reason for that is first of all, because we should pay people. And if you don't understand that you should pay people, even if it's 30 quid, because you went. The second thing is bands might say, well hang on a second, I'm putting all the work in and I'm getting less than 60% of, of my profit. If that's your attitude, it's not for you. The system isn't for you. Or if you need to do a show to make money for the record, don't do an off-axis show. Or set yourself a deal up with that band. The reason we want to do that is to make it viable. Because I think the other thing that stops bands moving is, why drive to London from Manchester? It's going to cost you 60 pounds to get three cans of beer and you know, a pat on the back. If you know that it's viable because you'll get the cost covered and you might come out with it, great. And then the other thing inside of that is, it's the same rule when you go. So yeah, the host band's going, well, I'm only getting 60%. But when you go to Brighton, you get your petrol paid and you get your, you know, a little bit of money. So that's how we want the money to work. The second thing about the tiering is yes and no. 
Yes, it should be, it, well, it could be tiered, but it's not going to be for now. It's not one credit you get, you get 20. Now, the reason it's 20, so it's future-proofing against doing denominations, and actually what we can bring in is things like you can get five more credits for letting the band sleep at your house. Yeah, but for now, it's just you get 20, you get 20. If there's 70 people, you get 20. If there's 150, we can tier it. And the other thing we can build in is what we want to do is create shows ourselves. So it's the thing about, I, mean, I did economics, the thing about currencies, you've got to have debits and credits. And it's, you know, you've got to, people have to er, be able to earn stuff to be able to spend it. But because we want to add value to that, we can bring in things like, well, how about we speak to, you know, a, a festival and as, alongside the introducing stage we have off access slots and you can earn the right to those slots so you know the festival doesn't get any credits they're just a way to spend it or we can uh, do deals with with other sort of industry partners where these credits which is what happened in brazil i mean their credits they can use to buy food and drink with down the line those bands that are getting 350 in you know, they're getting more credits and they can spend those extra credits to make sure they play with bands who've got 350. And then I think that's something we'll look at, you know, when we've got the critical mass of that. But so yes or no is the answer. The, the trick to it is to only let the right bands in. And you're right, there's a trust network here because what's going to happen is, you, if you're in a band or you're a promoter, we're going to say it's a minimum of 70 people. Someone's going to put a gig on with 56 people, right? Because it rained and the football was on and the World Cup was on and blah, 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 blah. So we've, we, you know, there's a, at the minute it's me as a verifier. The way we build the system is there's kind of an eBay feedback, you know, kind of unseen thing. But there will be a point where, there, or there has to be a point where we get rid of bands. I mean, that's part of maintaining a trust network. So you're right. If there's a band who said, oh yeah, we, you know, for whatever reason, their last gig sold hundreds, but actually in reality they've, 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 they're no longer really able to, to deliver, then they get kicked out for want of a better word. Um, and that's why we're starting with 40, because it's manageable. And actually, there's a lot of manual still monitoring of how it works. But the way the developers work is they build in, essentially, you know, things that can feed back to say, this is... And the other thing we do with that is it also lets you know who the super users are. I mean, I'm not a very technical man, but, you know, once you've got people using the system, you can tell who's using it badly, and you need to get rid of them, and who's using it well, and you need to... Um, sort of reward them if you can. So it won't be explicit, but with the super users, they'll be the people who then become allowed to invite the bands. Yep. Or to recommend the bands rather to me and, and the rest of those guys. Because it's not a scalable network if it's just me going around asking bands. You know, it's going to take me forever to get to everywhere. So what I want is these first 40 bands becomes 80 bands, but the ones who are super users, by super users, I mean they're regularly using it. Every show they do is successful. You know, you can say to those guys, well, you obviously understand the system. What other bands do you work with that you think should be part of it? And then we, and then we suddenly can, you know, really scale. But you're right, it has to be monitored. And, and that's where the, the lesson the Brazilians learn. Because when they first did their system, it was much more like, you know, as you'd like to do, just throw it up to everyone. And it fell apart because you know, there was bands who were working really hard and then they would try to redeem the show. They were driving 200 miles to, you know, a, a crappy gig with six people. So that would fall apart quickly. So, you, yeah, it's... It, it, it will be where bands who don't live up to it, unfortunately, get kicked out, at least in the short... Or there might be a yellow card, I don't know. I haven't worked that out yet. <laughs> They're all great bands involved at the minute. We haven't got that problem yet. <laughs>